All right, welcome back. And today we're gonna to be talking about BIOS. All right, I just purchased the Ryzen 9 5900X. I bought myself a B550 motherboard. And of course, the CPU didn't work with the motherboard. Now, if you have a B550 or an X570, you're probably gonna to have to update your BIOS to accept the 5000 series CPUs from AMD. Now, if you already have a computer running with a CPU in there, an older CPU in there, all you need to do is just go to the manufacturer's website, download the BIOS, boot into the BIOS, and install it through there, through the ROM flash inside the BIOS. Usually, I think it's the DL, uh, the delete key, F1, F2, F10, just depending on the motherboard, get into the BIOS, and you can flash it through there. Now, in my case, I did not have a running AMD system. I'm going from Intel to AMD. So I don't have a Ryzen CPU that did, that works with this. So I'm unable to flash it the typical way. One of the reasons why I went with this MSI Mag B550M mortar Wi-Fi motherboard is because it has this feature right over here. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but there we go. As you can see, it has the flash BIOS button. All right, and what that allows me to do is that allows me to update the BIOS without having to have the CPU in, memory, Windows, or anything like that. You stick in a USB thumb drive, load an image of the BIOS to it, hit the flash button, and you're ready to go. And we're gonna talk about how we use this feature and how it works. And there is one little trick that you need to do to kind of make sure that this works. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna switch over to my other computer, show you through Windows what you need to do, and then we'll talk about this in a sec. All right, so let's take a look at this real quick. I'm gonna talk about using, in this case, the B550M mortar Wi-Fi for MSI. So I've logged onto their website. I haven't read the manual that comes with the motherboard book, and this is what it tells you to do. Updating the BIOS with a flash BIOS. It tells you to go to their website, download the BIOS. All right, so we went to their website, located it, downloaded it, make sure you have the right BIOS. Then it tells you to rename the BIOS to MSI.ROM, save it to a USB flash drive. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that in just a second. Then you connect your power supply to your CPU power, ATX power, plug in the USB flash drive, press the flash button to the BIOS, the LEDs will start flashing, and then when the LED stops flashing, you're done. But it leaves out an important step, and let's talk about that real quick. So first off, what you're gonna need, and it doesn't mention this, is you're gonna need to configure your USB thumb drive to master boot record. And that way, the BIOS can pick it up and it could install the BIOS, the new BIOS, onto the board. You're gonna need Rufus, okay? Go ahead, download Rufus, get the program you need. So you go to rufus.ie or whatever it is, just type in Rufus, and you use this a lot of times if you have an image of Windows 10 and you wanna take that image and burn it to a bootable USB thumb drive. So let's go ahead, let's download Rufus. Open up the file. So you have your Rufus up, it's running. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that you select the proper drive, which is gonna be your USB thumb drive. In my case, it's a four gig one. Make sure you have the right one in there. Don't format one that you didn't intend to format for that. Boot selection, you're gonna to go to non-bootable. Now what you need to do to make sure this works is you have to make sure that when it formats it, that it changes the par partition scheme to MBR, master boot record. If you don't change it to master boot record, it's not gonna work. Typically, they'll use it as GPT. I have found for some reason, all the ones I had were defaulted to that. Maybe it's just what I have, but it has to be set to MBR. So if you're trying to flash your BIOS and you keep running into an issue, this is typically the issue that you're gonna have is that the partition scheme is not sent to MBR, master boot record. Make sure the file system for this is FAT, not NTFS or anything fat default, it'll be fine. The target system, if you notice where it says over here, it's BIOS or UEFI. By, by formatting it and changing it to this, when you plug it in, it's gonna pick up the file, it's gonna flash the BIOS, and it'll run fine with no issues, and you'll be good to go. So once you have that all set up and your screen looks kinda like mine, hit start, okay. And it's going to do its thing. It takes like real quick, as you can see, we're done. I mean, this is only a four gig USB thumb drive. And then what you're going to do is you're going to right click your file after you renamed it to MSI.ROM, hit copy. Okay, go to your thumb drive over here and paste it. I just hit Control V. Can't see that, but I hit Control V. And it's going to copy it. I'll take another quick few seconds over here and you're done. 
It's very simple and it's that easy. And like I said, if you go to the manufacturer's website, they don't tell you about this. So if you have a thumb drive and you keep using it and it's not working, this is why it wasn't working. I forgot that you had to do this and when I went to update my BIOS, I was probably here for about an hour or two until I got online and then I read it and I was like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to change it to master boot record when I do it. Rufus is the easiest way to do it. I'm sure there are other ways to do it. This is a free program and typically this is the program that you'll use to create a bootable USB thumb drive for your Windows. So let's get out of this and let's go back over to the bench. So we're back at the bench and we have our thumb drive over here so we're going to pop it out. So what you're going to do is you'll see if you have the BIOS flash button typically the uh, the USB port next to the flash BIOS button is right over here. It'll say it. I've seen one motherboard manufacturer where it was over here but it'll tell you flash BIOS. That's the one that you're going to put in there. So once you do that you pop it in and then what you'll do is you just want to get like a little extended screwdriver or a pen you'll hit that button all you gotta do is hit that button once once you hit that button once what it'll do is it'll start flashing it'll turn the computer on and what it'll do is it'll start flashing now my recommendation is to have a, use a thumb drive that you can actually see the read and write on it this one doesn't so it's kind of a pain and inside over here you'll see the flashing and if you don't have a good eye or you're not attentive to it you won't know when it's done so have a good thumb drive. I typically use these PNY ones because you can see up on top when they're reading and writing, they start flashing and it'll flash and it'll do it for about five minutes. So it's going to take a little bit. When it's done, you'll see no flashing, no flashing inside the USB port. You'll see no flashing on your thumb drive and this thing will probably stay running. Once that's done, turn it off. If you're not sure if you've done it right or if it's still not working, do it again. Now, if you don't have the right, uh, partition scheme set up and if you don't have a set up for MBR what it'll do is it'll flash it'll do it maybe once or twice within five or ten seconds and then it'll just go back to doing nothing so you have to make sure that it's gone through five minutes you can sit there wait for five minutes you'll know because it'll constantly be flashing and flashing and flashing if it's done right if it's flashes like once or twice it's not done wrong and it's done wrong and typically that means that this thumb drive was not set up properly so MSI is not clear on this and most motherboard manufacturers are not. They fail to kind of tell you that. So if you're not familiar or haven't been doing this for a while, that's what you're going to miss. So if you got your Ryzen 9 5000 or Ryzen 5000 series CPU and you're running your B550 X570 and you need to flash it and you don't have the system pre-running or with another CPU you can use, you can either borrow somebody's CPU, pay for somebody to do it for you, or you could do it this way, flash it properly, pop it in, do it yourself in a run. I did that and after an hour or two of trying to figure it out learning that I did that my CPU ran I was good to go so I just want to do this video to show and teach people because I've watched a couple of videos and nobody told me about that even MSI's website on their YouTube didn't tell me about that and it wasn't until I did some searching on the forums where somebody says yeah if you're having that problem it's typically this so I just want to share this information thanks for watching and we'll see what we come up with next